Wabonia will live on forever. Long live Wabonia. Uh, where is Chao Chu? That's my question right now. And what the hell is your supposed dark magic titan? If you're not fighting me, this is the end. I'm 100% going back. I'm going to try and come up with a plan. Because currently, with dark magic being involved, I've got no plan. So, I've been thinking and the uh, first things first, I'm removing this hat because it's rather adorable, sure, but this is asking for a little bit of seriousness. I'm sitting here with multiple dilemmas. For starters, the signs seem to point to the final battle being right up ahead, without neither Roller, Fanto or Matician are actually trying to stop us. They think they've won, and although Chao Chu supposedly attempted to stop this supposed Ron figure, she failed. And they got themselves a dark magic titan if we have to believe them. But I'm not 100% sure if the big battle happens when we enter the Temple of Ixquin, or if there still is a dungeon of some kind beforehand. All because we've not seen the titan symbol like we've constantly seen beforehand. So do I level up everyone to level 73 and be ready for the final battle, or do I risk the possibility that we're not there yet and thus might end up being over leveled once we do reach the final battle? Secondly, I don't think this team's gonna cut it. If we're gonna face a Dark Magic Titan, meaning all our offensive capabilities will be reduced and Dark Magic attacks might tear through our team, I fear for both Wild Bill and Lycana's lives as they won't be able to withstand more than one or two hits. And likewise, I can't come up with a proper strategy involving this current setup that isn't focused on purely dealing damage. So, I think we're going to have to make one final massive change to our team layout. Wild Bill, Lycana and Amarillo are going to take a backseat and I am bringing back Frizzle while also letting Glomgold and Chaos join the team. The reason why? Frizzle for starters was a pretty powerful ice type, sporting some fairly decent special attack and defense, which would help with my current lack of that specific defense right now. Glumgold on the other hand is going to be a support. We've seen the power of shock status effects and also the devastation which a dropped accuracy can cause and Glumgold has it all. And finally, our little Chaos. The one Coromon I didn't expect to find a use for in this playthrough, but if there's one thing which those dark magic attacks have shown in the past, it's that often they are paired with rather powerful stat debuffs. And thus Chaos will be our secret weapon. 4. If this Ron wants to decrease our stats, he's going to find out that the inverse will happen. And of course, Chaos also has the benefit of having access to Confusion, meaning that I've got a second status move to inflict when our shock from Glomgold wears off. This, however, does mean that I've got a rather big training session up ahead, a final training session. We are going to level everyone up to level 70 in the hopes that it will be enough to withstand the might of dark magic. And here, ladies and gentlemen, you have a perfect example of why shock can be so bloody powerful. Oh, I was wondering if this was still going to happen in this playthrough. My first original Wild Perfect! I am taking you home. And I am naming this beauty Mox. Uh, ok, 
Okay, that's way too close for comfort. Way too close for comfort. Oh, we found it! The evolution to Flowish! Derry Kara. Oh, you are a beauty. But also, you're pretty much dead. Good morning! Nice day for fishing, ain't it? Uh huh? And there we go, a key component to our strategy, Taser. Oh my god, Swarm Shocker hits three targets. I was not aware of this, but I love it. And you know what, while we're at it, Glomgold gets to have his own static spinner as well. Well, if it is the potent Yuka Claw. Yes, please. And because you're so shiny, I'm naming you Tamatoa. Oh, Macmillus, you look beautiful in blue. Beautiful enough to please become mine. And I'm going to name you Seer. Oh, a potent Atalanta and a 20 potential? Yeah, I'm going to capture you, my friend. Alright, let's see what these two beauties look like when they are perfect. Oh, yeah, you two already... Look gorgeous. Crypeast looks interesting. Atalanta looks gorgeous. And I've got two pretty decent names in mind. Atalanta will be named Azura. And Crypeast will be named Glimmer. Ah, you just got to love to see it. Absolutely. As the name implies, perfect. Oh, and here we go, Chaos evolving to its final form, Jellaquad, for the full power. Oh hey, and it turns out that 99 fruits is the most you can have of one specific kind. Or maybe 99 is not the maximum, because apparently we do own 101. Well, in that case, I'm not even gonna sell them. Ah, I was wondering where I could find you. Turns out he was hiding on this little island all along. Oi, Macmillus, look at me. I'm the tentacle monster now. And with that, the final level has been achieved. Which means it's time for us to say our final prayers. Because the end is upon us. And there you have it, our final team for the final boss of Koromon. And as it turns out, I've been tremendously lucky. Managed to get a total of three perfect Koromon without using potent sense and... Apparently... I've dodged death quite a few times during the training. You see, in the ruins of x Quin and in the submerged tunnels, there are some Koromon, namely Yuka Claw, Chiraptor and Doctera, uh, who possess a move called Death Grip. They kept on missing, and thus I figured after my training session, why don't I level up my own potent Yuka Claw to see what that move exactly does? Hold on, Death Grip does what? Yeah, apparently it's a one-hit KO move. 
And I am not sure what I would have done if it ended up killing one of my Coromon, as I have always hated those one-hit KO moves. They're a slight annoyance in a normal playthrough, but an absolutely devastating one in a Nuzlocke. Especially when the only counter move is to just not fight the enemies that have it. Which is not exactly fun in my opinion. But everyone is alive and everyone is level 70, which means it's time for some final preparations. I did ask around on Discord to be sure that my gut feeling was indeed right, and it turns out that it was. Once we enter that temple of Ixquin, it's boss time. So let's quickly distribute some final stats, and then let's discuss our game plan. Glomgold has a total of 60 points to spend, which means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in special defense, and all the rest in normal defense. For a nice and equal defense, because uh, attack-wise, yeah, Glomgold is not meant to deal damage for us today. Cobalt only has 3 points available, which means I'm just going to pump them right into HP. Frizzle has 24 points, which means he's going to deal tons and tons of damage. Chaos has got 57 points, which means I'm going to evenly spread them between defense and special defense. Sparky only got 6, which means all are going directly into HP. And Coda got 6 points, which I'm also going to put in HP. Which brings us to our strategy. We are going to lead with Glomgold, and Glomgold's main purpose, because he doesn't have too much attacking power, but he does have the HP and the defenses right now, Glomgold's purpose is to try and use Taser on the opponent to cause a shock, followed by 1, 2 or 3, depending on how long he can stay alive for, Swarm Diversions, dropping the target's accuracy by as much as possible. Hopefully at that point in time the opponent might miss a few attacks and then we can switch Glomgold out while he is still alive. We need Glomgold alive. Once Glomgold switches out, we move over to Cobalt. With the mass of defenses that we have got on this beast, although the special defense might not be too great, but hopefully combined with the accuracy drops and the shocking, we can set up a few withdrawals, possibly going to plus six, plus six on the defense or special defense. And with those moves of the opponent hopefully missing, we can slowly start dealing a little bit of damage with permafrost and crystal barrage and maybe head bash. Depending on if the opponent will send out other Coromon, then we can maybe deal with head bash and permafrost in case they use water or ice types. So that should hopefully be fine. And at that point in time, we are also going to try and heal up Glomgold again to full because we're going to need him in a little bit. At this point in time, hopefully we can make the opponent go to the next phase, which means the shock is dropped, the swarm diversion accuracy drop is removed, which means we need a safe switch in. I'm going to go to Frizzle, hopefully, and with Frizzle, deal as much damage as we can which will mean that Frizzle will become a sacrifice. Frizzle will die at this point in time and we switch back safely into Glomgold where he can pull off his Swarm Diversion trick again. We're not going to use Taser again here because we need that status to be inflicted by Chaos with Confusion. By making the opponent hazy, hopefully we will make him waste as many SP points as possible and should he still hit us through the use of all of his dropped accuracy now. Um, if our own stats get decreased, we instead increase them. And with the use of a revitalizer, hopefully Chaos will stay alive for as long as possible as he starts to deal some damage with Hydro Punch. And if Water Coromon are being sent out, he has got Sting as an electric move, surprisingly. And should all things go wrong, we've always got last stand available to maybe endure one hit and maybe get another shock off, maybe force the opponent to drop his SP to zero on an attack that has failed. Hopefully that will work out. And should Chaos fall, then only Sparky and Koda remain. Sparky will try to deal some poison with Toxic Cloud, followed by maybe using EMP just in case the opponent has increased its own attacks. And meanwhile, Sparky will just deal as much damage as possible. And afterwards, 
only code that remains with frigid barrier to half the damage from special attacks and sumo stance to half the damage from spe uh, physical attacks hopefully staying alive with his own canoe fruit just in case he can increase his own attack with deep cut and deal tons of damage with avalanche and hopefully that will be enough i don't have any other plans i hope this is going to work so i'd say let's put this finely thought out plan into action so our Wabonian friends have taken over Chalchu has been defeated apparently and they've got their dark magic titan but why in the end it was all worth it my brothers and sisters on Wabonia after struggling for so long at long last they can start life anew all thanks to us a legacy will live on in their hearts forevermore they apparently had some kind of cataclysm or something it's also nostalgic a beautiful dark magic vista is made of dark magic mountains dark magic lakes and dark magic forests the great cataclysm decimated everything we ever loved what was this great cataclysm and why did it force you to leave your own world behind go to ours and cause mayhem you're so glad you went through the pain of rescuing dark magic essence yeah it's all great and nice that you want to come up for your own world and whatnot and want to live on. I can get that, but this is not the way to do it. Let's just say that. Anyway, final preparation. We've got our SP cake excels. Everyone is going to get one. At least, is that, is that a waste? Yeah, that is a waste. That is a total waste. Don't use XL cakes if you can just use a large one. Ah, oh, I really hope we're ready. This is all I've got. I have got no other plans. Glomgold has got a surf route to increase his electric moves. Cobalt and Chaos have got the revitalizer. Frizzle got a Ras fruit to increase his ice damage. And Spark and Code have got a canoe fruit in order to hopefully stay alive for as long as possible. So, let's do this. The Sun Temple. And that is where Hosei showed us where they dug the hole. The equilibrium draws nearer. Are all of you ready? Preserver, tell you is here, somewhere nearby. Horrible. I can even feel her struggle, trying to salvage our equilibrium. Chalchu, Chalchu, please respond to our cries. Unfortunately for you forgotten relics, Chalchu is no longer a part of this world. But it pleases me greatly that you wish to join her so soon. That will save us all a lot of time. Okay. You're the dark magic elements. Hi. We will not surrender to the likes of you. This planet was meant to bend our elements, not yours. Together with the Preserver, we've come to take back what is ours. Preserver? Oh, only one. Ah, you mean this tiny being. Hey. I might be solo, but I've got five titans behind me and a squad of six, and we're ready to kick your ass. Hmm, quite like my people, but much uglier. Hey, I wasn't going to say anything about the blue Wabonius being ugly and whatnot, because that's not what I think. But, yeah, same goes for you. Also, um, this is Chalchu speaking. They got a dark magic titan by corrupting Chalchu. Oh no. Tell me, Preserver. Tell me your impression of dark magic thus far. Mimicking, conducting, teleporting and much more. 
Astonishing, is it not? New Wimbonia has no need for these inferior elements that stand behind you. Everything I've seen touch dark magic is awful. Awfully strong, awfully deadly, and also awfully disruptive. It's corrupting our core, destroying our environment. Why did you come here? What about your own equilibrium? My own equilibrium? What a joke! Koro created us to bend our elements, creates prosperous worlds. This went well for some time, as you can imagine. Yet Koro blatantly let my planets fall to a natural disaster. The Great Cataclysm. So my people had to seek out a new world for me to bend. Your world! Ah, oh, I see. So that is how it came to be. As Titans, we understand your desire to survive and prosper. But this cannot be a part of Koro's will. You could have come to us on more neutral terms. This planet society has come up with a groundbreaking solutions to problems before. What is that? Are you implying your humans would come up with better solutions than my Wabonians? Impossible! You will see the error of your ways, just like your little child you did. What is... what is this force pulling me? Um... That be Chao Chu. That's Chao Chu's physical form. She's fighting back. Her power. She's doing everything she can to concentrate and expose her one essence. It makes no difference. Physical form or no. At my full power, you stand nary a chance. Reserver. We will lend you our power. Together, we can find the essence within. Our only chance. Chalchu, my lovely sister. We will defeat the darkness that binds you. Hopefully together, we can do this. You stand against Chalchu. Dark magic is unlike any other element. Give in to its beauty. Preserver, this will take all our efforts together. It will take all our efforts. You're gonna help. Okay, you're gonna help. That did not do an awful lot. Huh. It didn't. This essence is stronger than any of us alone. Yes, you finally see it. The potential of dark magic. I see the potential, and I definitely say, oh my god, that's a ton of health, and oh my god, that's a ton of SP. Um, how about a taser, my friend? And please don't kill me in one hit, that would absolutely suck. And you're level 70. I was expecting level 75. Okay. That is fine. This works out brilliantly. Oh, Glomgold takes less damage from water attacks. Cobalt takes less damage from water attacks. Frizzle takes less damage from water attacks. I think. Yeah. Oh, this is perfect. Okay, I love this. Okay, uh, we did a taser. We were going for Swamp Diversion. I think I can get maybe two or three off of this. With a little bit of luck, this will work out. If you stop missing, I'll be very happy. Nope, you're still hitting me. We're still alive. Special attack decreased badly. Okay, yeah, Glomgold, you're not going to do an awful lot. Um, go for a Swarm Diversion. You're not meant to deal damage right now. But this is working for now. And you're shocked and couldn't move. Okay, that's one free hit. Here we go. One final Swarm Diversion. And then it's over to Cobalt. Okay, please don't hit me with something very powerful that will kill me. There we go, alright. So, you are at minus six? Brilliant. Cobalt, it's up to you now. If you can, please avoid an attack. That would be very helpful. Shadow Rent. Yes, this is working. God, I love that accuracy dropping. Okay, withdraw all the way. 
make sure that our special defense is increased as well, because I have got no clue if these attacks... Um, there we go. I've got no clue if these attacks of Chalchu are physical or special, but when you can't hit me, it will be so much better. So if we keep this up, this will be fine, then we can start dealing some damage. And because you're dark magic, it doesn't... It really doesn't matter whether or not I hit you with a super effective move or not, because there is no super effectiveness. So, Cobalt, show us the might of that shell of yours. Show us that you will tank any hit that is thrown your way, if anything like this breaks through. Okay. Okay, um... Okay! Minus three attack and special attack. With one attack? That is insane. Uh, that's going to prolong this quite a bit, I think. Ooh. I'm going to have to deal damage before you do that even more. I think I'm going to have to stop right here. Plus four we'll have to do. We are going to go for Crystal Barrage and hopefully get a bleed off. 50% chance to bleed, I believe. That's really not a lot of damage. And you're not bleeding. Okay. This is fine, I hope. God. Okay, splash. Missing. Good. Good. We're waiting to slowly drive you into a second phase. There we go. There's a bleeding wound. And corrupt misses. Good, good, good. Oh, the moment Chalchu goes into second phase, that's where stuff might get a little bit nasty. Because that's when he loses a shock and his accuracy drops. So, slowly deal as much damage as we can. Everything will be fine. Just keep bleeding. Just keep bleeding. This is actually working. I love this. If you work out a plan, you will survive. You decrease my special attack? How low is my special attack now? That decreased it by two stages. Oh my god. Okay, um, I'm not all too happy with that. But that really shows. Again, special attack. It decreases a random stat. Oh, wow. Okay, if we get to the point where we need to use Chaos, which is going to happen... Uh, oh. I almost forgot part of the plan. I almost forgot part of the plan. Combi Cake Large on Glomgold right now. Oh, my hubris almost got to me. This is still fine. This is still fine. Uh, we can deal with you nicely. I'm just going to continue with the Crystal Barrage. That one works the best. And look at that SP gain. Okay. As long as this plan keeps on working like this. Right now, it's terribly slow. Yes, I'm well aware of it. But we've not reached the power stage just yet. All we need to do is slowly push it towards the second phase. When that happens, no clue. But I'm really curious right now. Because this damage really is slow. And we're going to have to rest off of this again. Oh boy. Okay, so next move would be go to Frizzle. Can you stop with that disruption? What are you going to drop now? Special attack decreased badly. I've got no more special attack. Seriously. Okay. We rest, everything is fine, our defenses keep us alive. And this also means that Cobalt should at the end stay alive. Okay, so our special attack was decreased, Crystal Barrage is physical, so that's good. We're just gonna keep on sticking with that, let the bleeding do its thing as we barely deal any damage, my god. I expected less damage. I wasn't expecting it to be as bad as this though. And you Theoretically, I could give Cobalt a few cakes to increase his attack again. But chances are for that to go wrong would also be pretty bad. And hey, the bleeding is not affected by any damage decreasing, so this works. There we go. No disruption for you. And more SP, please. So how are you doing, Child Chu? Getting a little bit shocked. How is your special attack doing? Or your special points? The preserve still fights on. We're not alone, friends. As long as the preserver refuses to give up, so do I. 
Take my defense! Whoa. Okay, that is awesome. Dark magic can pierce through anything! Well, you're having trouble with Cobalt's shell, for starters. Especially now, Forrest. Thank you very much. That is really helpful. Um, also. Okay. If Forrest increases my defenses. Fault got punched Chalchu in the face. What are the other three gonna do? Illusion, Hosei, and Sart. Like, if any of those three increases any of my stats, and I am switched into Chaos, that's going to be a decrease in stats, not an increase. Okay, that's a bad idea. That's a bad idea for sure. I don't like that. On one hand, yes, I like the increase in my own stats right now. And Chalchu is still fighting. Okay, are you still... You're still on the decrease accuracy. This is still working. Slow and steady wins the race. Come on. When is your second stage? I'm waiting for it. Slowly, steadily. Maybe I should increase my attack just a tad. Maybe I should. You know what? I'm gonna do that. Because I've not been using these cakes at all. We are going for an attack cake large. Go on, Cobalt. Increase that attack. Make sure you deal a little bit more damage. Because Chalchu too needs to rest. Seriously. So much bloody SP. I don't see this. my previous strategies with the poison working at all. Oh, and I don't have enough SP points. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. All we need to do is survive a few more hits. No problem. And hope that Chelchu doesn't break through. But we have got our defenses. You don't stand a chance, my friend. No chance. At all. Don't decrease my attack. Are you kidding me? Really? I just increased that. Oh, boy. All right. I'm just gonna keep on going. Just gonna keep on going. You're breaking through a little bit too much for, to my liking, my friend. Yeah, we are at our lowest right now. God. Okay, come on. This was not meant to take this long. And you're breaking through more and more. Please don't do that, child chew. Please don't. Uh, I need to go for that safe switch in. I need to be absolutely certain that you dropped your shock. I'm just gonna skip ahead to the point where we actually do face Chelchu. Because surely it must happen at any point right now, right? Right? I swear, if Cobalt is gonna destroy Chelchu on his own, I'm gonna be surprised. I'm really gonna be surprised, but it is at this point in time not out of the question, because bloody hell, Cobalt's defenses are amazing! You think this being is mighty? Strength is my speciality! Here, have a taste! Oh, Hosei, my guardian angel! How much firm did you increase stuff by? Pathetic! Do you really need to rely on others to reach your full potential? Oh, here we go. Alright, so, you're going into your full potential? Um, yeah. We're all out of opportunity right now. Cobalt is gonna die here, I think. What I'm gonna try and do is maybe get a freeze off, which might result into a safe switching. Just maybe. Cobalt can die here. But first up, Chalchu has got to break through my defenses. Can you finally prove that dark magic can indeed break through anything, Chalchu? Or Ron, if that's your real name. Just stay alive, Cobalt, for as long as possible. Hold on, did, did you really miss? That's not supposed to happen, it's supposed to be Chalchu that misses, okay? 
Come on. Okay. I, theoretically, I could also use that as a moment to switch into someone else. This is a 15% chance to freeze you, right? 15% chance. Not a lot, but should be doable. And all the while, slowly dealing a little bit of damage. There we go. All right, Cobalt. Thank you very much for your service. But right now... We don't need Frizzle. Theoretically. We could just go into Glom Gold, but Frost doesn't last all that long. We're still gonna go into Frizzle. Frizzle is still maybe gonna die. Like every single time I planned for a Cormon to die, it didn't work in the past, so. Oh. It's not a safe switch in. Okay. Well, so much for that plan. Uh. Okay, I had clearing winds just in case you were gonna do something nasty, but have some frozen spikes. Empowered. Come on. Okay, that's still not a lot of damage, but it's working. Uh, is Frizzle gonna die here? Not yet. Although you do decrease my defense badly. Sandman is not gonna do an awful lot. Chances for that to actually work with the risk of actually missing this? Uh uh, not right now. We don't need clearing wind. We could use a drain to stay alive for a little bit longer, maybe? Really? That really is not a lot of damage. No, we need to stick with frozen spikes. Frizzle can get two more attacks off. Two more. Frizzle. Thank you very much for your services, but I fear that this is where we might part. And it was totally worth it, and I'm very happy to have had you by my side, my friend. But sacrifices have to be made. Alright. Frizzle gone. Back to Glomgold. No taser. All we need is Swarm Diversion. I don't know how long this accuracy drop will last. I don't know if he has a second or a third or a fourth phase or whatever. He might even restore our health. He might even actually bring Cormon forward like Sark did in the past. But we need three Swarm Diversions. I'm going to go for three if you're not dealing that much damage, my friend. This is working. Absolutely working. Okay, well, that's number three, right? And no bubble blow for you. It's time for chaos. The one Coromon I thought I didn't have a use for. I'm still surprised by it, but if I do get hit... There we go. Thank you for increasing my attack and special attack greatly, Chalchu. I bet you didn't see this one coming. <laughs> Have a confusion while you rest. We will drain you of power. Dark magic stands no chance against the might of all elements combined. Except for sand, but the eh, sort is somewhere hanging around in the back doing his thing. And meanwhile, go chaos. <laughs> Not very effective? Sure. Not intense battle. A time for rest! Make the most of it, Preserver! What are you doing? Chelsea you got knocked down for two rounds? Go no, smother it with attacks! Oh, you got it, Sarge! You got it! We're doing this! I'll show you the might of true water! Oh, <laughs> this is epic! I love this! Okay, Charles is no longer feeling haze. Okay, please don't get rid of your haze. Yes, I need you to be hazy. Thank you. There we go. We're still recovering. That's fine. Have another Hydro Punch. As long as we keep hitting these, because they don't have 100% accuracy. But of course Chaos gets the crit in. And you got knocked down. Oh my god. Your squad will never fall with a master of life and death on your side. Okay, you're healing everyone up, but what about Frizzle? Life and death? What do you know about life and death? I had to watch my people suffer. The dark magic will always be on my side. Oh, will it now? And Koda's still dead. Illusion, you didn't revive Frizzle. 
I guess that makes sense, but dark magic might be on your side, Chao Chu. The other elements are on my side. Which means one more hit is all it takes, unless you have any other tricks up your sleeve. Because I'm sure that this defeat for you will sting. Chao Chu has fainted. We bloody well did it. Thank you, team. And most important of all, thank you, Frizzle. Maybe your sacrifice was not meant to be, but it did help out an awful lot. And of course, Gondolf after 71, because of course that little firefly has to show off. No, no! The energy, my hopes, draining. Quicker than ever before. It's all so sad. I've lost. We've lost. Discard my element. Get rid of dark magic. My people. Everything we've worked for. Lost to the stars forevermore. But you took over Chao Chu. Where is Chao Chu? Preserver, you came through! With your help? But Chao Chu, where is our sister? She's got to still be around. Brethren, Preserver, Chao Chu. Such a great risk coming here alone. Yes, I had to. Anything to give the preserver enough time. No other rational option presented itself. The threat has finally been neutralized. You did well, sister. But this opportunity must not be wasted. Let's go. Finally. I long to fade to the mist once more. Thanks for the preserver. No, Fault or Nelda. The elements of this planet will continue to evolve for millennia yet. Koromon and humans will continue to play together in Koro's light. We are lucky to be given such an opportunity. Starting today, we should all strive for a better tomorrow. But what about dark magic? At the end of the day, questions remain. Ah, uh, thank you for playing. Well, that'd be the end of Koromon then. Which does make the question, does anything happen afterwards? Don't tell me it was all a dream. It was not gonna be- It's not all a dream. Hello, Rigel. Yeah, sorry, I've had a long day saving the world, all that kind of stuff. Oh, Fultonelda, hey there! Lord, you've been taking a nice little rest these past couple of days. As I said, I saved the world, I'm tired. And I also, I trained many hours to get a perfect squad, thank you very much! Please, take all the time you need to recuperate, you earned it. Uh, by the way, all of your friends at Luxolus chipped in to put together a special care package for you. They did? There's not enough gold in the world to thank you, but, well, we gave it a shot. Three potent cents, thank you, always handy. Two platinum spinners, that's worth a lot of gold. Skill flash three. Okay. What is that? The skill flashes do make me happy. Everyone hopes to see you back at work soon. There are some real remarkable discoveries taking place. Stuff that's beyond your wildest dreams. Some of us theorize it'll take a couple of years at least, but eventually, how about another adventure together? 
is that a possible hint towards a possible second Coromon game? Because if so, yes, please. Uh, space adventure. Okay, now I'm intrigued. A space. Would we go and visit the planet of the Wabonians? That could be awesome. Okay, well. I guess that is that. Let's go meet mom downstairs. See if she's got anything to say. Hi mom. Good morning. Oh, Fulton Elder. How did you save the world? Can you finally clean your room? I mean, mom, don't ask the impossible, okay? Saving the world? Sure. Cleaning my room? It's already cleaned up. The fact that you don't find it clean doesn't mean that it is not clean. Okay, maybe it's a tiny bit dirty, but still, you're asking the impossible. Ah, oh, I'm just kidding, honey. Take some time off. Play some video games with Dexter. You deserved it. Thank you very much, mom. So how about, how about Dexter? You saved the planet? Yeah, so what? You still can't beat my swimming rush high score? You're only good at unimportant things. Exactly. The most important thing in life is totally a high score. Well, show me. My favorite video game. Show me your high score, Dexter. Oh, the rascal. He indeed removed Flurmy Ru uh, Flurmy Rush? My god, he removed Swirmy Rush from my computer. Of course I'm not going to get a high score in that case. You win this day, Dexter. But not tomorrow. And so it seems like life has returned to normal. I... Hi. Hello. Jochem, bring it on. Oh, hold up, hold up. No. 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 Uh, sure. Okay, I was not suddenly... Ex that was one of the developers. Th those were the two developers, Jochem and Marcel. And uh, I was not expecting a battle. How about no? You have a taser, friend. Uh, this was not part of my plan. I was going to just look around, see if anything had changed. Oh. So you're still gonna hurt me. How dare you. I'm, I'm gonna put my same plan in motion. You will meet the glory that is called chaos. In a little bit. I, want, I just wanted to take a look around, see if anything had changed in the world. If there was anything new going on, I'm not gonna let Glomgold die, thank you very much. Uh, everyone is a little bit on the dead side. I do hope I survive this. Th chaos, please, don't die. Thank you. Very much. Can you please punch this thing in the face? Falcadon, you had to go and burn me, right? You had to. Here, have a Hydro Punch. Okay, but if you have a Falcadon, that is a perfect one at that. Because that is the perfect color. Um, You've got the other starters as well, don't you? Don't tell me you've got the other starters as well. Oh, no. You've got the other starters as well. Okay. This is fine. We can survive this here. Have a... Have a sting. That will hurt quite a bit. You're fully rested. Uh, no. Will you get shocked? You won't get shocked. You will get shocked. Yes. <laughs> go Chaos, go. That's how we like it. All right. So next up is going to be a Berialis. Are we prepared to face a Berialis with our team right now? I mean, Cobalt could maybe... Uh, what does Coda have? Does Coda have a way of dealing with an ice type? We got deep cuts, and we know that Berialis is physical, so theoretically we could switch into Coda and go with that. I think that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. Coda, you didn't get a chance to shine in the final battle. Neither did Sparky, but you get a chance to shine right now. Sure, this Megalobite might streamline and whatnot, but this will work. We go for an avalanche, maybe? Or do I go for Sumo Stands of Frigid Barrier first? I think you were physical. Let's go with Sumo Stance. Drop or make sure that you don't deal too much damage. Thank you very much. Okay, I don't care how fast you think you're gonna be. You're gonna you're still gonna be bulky at the end of the day. So no matter how firmly defensive you are, at the end of the day, you're still shocked. No problem there. And we've got our full defenses. Break through this ice cube, my friend. Well, I try and wipe you away with an avalanche. Is that gonna kill? That's a crit. Well done, Coda. 
definitely what we like to see. All right. Well, show me that perfect Barry Alice. My Barry Alice is so much better and have a deep cut. Really? You're gonna use beat up? I mean, that's clever, but I don't like it. So start bleeding and Okay, our sumo stance ended. Let's put that back on just in case. Because I think that beat up would have done a whole lot more damage if it wasn't up. Oh, really? Static fur. Yeah, I'm... I'm not planning to actually get hit by that. So, have an avalanche. That does not make contact. Well, you throw a glacier my way. Sure, it's a battle of the ice types. Come on, Koda. Show this thing that you're the better one out there. And more bleeding. Yes. Ah. Well, this is working out very nicely. And before I challenge the other developer, uh, I'm definitely going to heal because I was not prepared for this. Thank you. Dear oh dear. Fontenelle defeated Jochem. Wow. I'd say the exact same. Yes. All right. Very good. Why don't you try again? My Cormon gained a level after that fight. They're gonna be stronger and stronger every single time I'm gonna fight you. Yeah, no. Um, Marcel, wait one moment. I'll get my team ready for you. Although, what the hell is Marcel's team going to be in that case? Oh, and of course, yeah, because Frizzle died. I'm very sorry, pal. But once again, thank you. Alright, Amarillo is the perfect switch. And in this case, Marcel, let's see what you have got then, my friend. I hope you're ready for this. I hope I'm ready too. With your platinum spinners, show off. Oh, you got an Ecliptor. Nice. Eh, yeah, with menacing. Okay, I don't care too much about my own attack, so same strategy as before. Have a taser, have a swarm diversion, and then we switch into Amarillo. Oh, you're going to increase your own special defense. Okay, interesting strategy. It will work. But I have a Swarm Diversion, because I'm not going to be dealing with special attacks. That's the idea here. So, let's see. Can Glom Gold survive this without much trouble? That's a crit. I don't like that. Uh, oh. Maybe Amarillo is a bad idea. Amarillo is probably a bad idea to get it with Cobalt. Um, I'm going to go with Sparky, actually. I was planning Amarillo, but I completely forgot that Ecliptor was actually a special attacker, not a physical one. Oh, really? Hypno-Wave? I mean, it can work, but I'm definitely going to say no to it. Uh, yeah, we're going to go with Quadvolt. Thank you, Sparky, for waking up instantly. Can you kill this thing? That was a crit. Ooh. Okay. Friends. For one second, can you stop critting? Please. Thank you. That will be brilliant. You have, you've got decreased accuracy and you're shocked. Please have that. Thank you. All right, Coda, let's put this up. Frigid barrier first. Sumo stance we don't instantly need because this thing is not going to hit us with any physical moves. Any future target might, but have some avalanche power. Ecliptor. Bye bye. So if you send out an Ecliptor, which means I love your style, Marcel. What else are you going to throw my way? You send out Rhino Bus. Well, hello, friend. Um, not entirely sure what you were, but have a deep cut. Hopefully this will work. I don't know about just strengths and defenses. Okay, don't like that. Yes, taser me when I'm already shocked by your nature. Thank you. Have another deep cut. Lightning strike. We can handle. We can handle. We probably should... We've got frigid barrier active. We should be fine. But that will just deal even more. And that is Rhino Buzz gone. All right. And who's your final Coromon then? That would be... Skeletops? Oh, the evolution to Skaldra. We have not seen this one before. That is awesome. I don't know what you look like normally, but that is awesome. Okay, uh, I think you were physical. I think you were physical. I hope you were physical. 
Let's see how this is gonna go. Oh, no. No, don't like that, friends. Don't like that. You were sand? Uh, how am I going to deal with you? Acid bites. Mm. This is fine. You're just dropping my defense. Nothing wrong there. Oh, nasty. Nasty. Definitely nasty. Um, chaos. Chaos can have to deal with you. If you try and decrease my defense, it will increase. And likewise, hopefully can I deal with your madness? This is getting a little bit scary, though, with two of those increases. So how about you don't do that? How about you have some confusion? There we go. Just how we like it. And please survive a hit. Survive a hit, Chaos. You try to put me to sleep. And do that. Come on. Chaos, wake up. We need you. Thank you. Chaos tries to answer the call. Oh. I don't like where this is going. I really don't like where this is going. Can you please stop trying to buff yourself that badly? Because once you do hit me, it's going to hurt a lot. Oh. Yeah. I'm afraid. I'm a little bit afraid right now. Might more Cormon die here while trying to fight the developers? Are the developers going to be the biggest danger here? I hope not. Come on. Ah, Chaos is still fast asleep. Well, at least he increases his SP by sleeping. And you're no longer feeling hazy. You need to be hazy. Come on. There's the confusion. Love it. All right. We can deal with this bloody Skeletops. I hope. Stop the increasing your defense and attack. Please. This is terrifying. Come on. Plus three. Four. What? Plus four. This is really bad. Chaos. Hit this thing. Knock him down. Maybe. That's a crit. Oh. You're brilliant. But you didn't knock him down. We should still be able to manage. Right. 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 Come on. One attack is all it takes. I'm going to go with a sting, just in case. Come on, Chaos. Don't die right now. You've survived a bloody Dark Magic Titan. Surely you will survive this. Surely you will survive this. Surely you will survive this. Would we be able to survive? It's a risky move. You need to wake up, Chaos. I have all faith in you. Wake up. Wake up. This is your chance. Come on. There we go. Well fought, Marcel. Well fought. Ah. Quite a surprise. But I'll take it. Nice. Definitely. Well done. Why did you try again? I can't get a level off that fight. Yeah, not today, friends. Not today. Also... Thank you very much for making Coromon an amazing game, and good luck in the future. But that means I continue exploring, because life has returned to normal. Maybe there are still some people around that have anything new to say, so I'm going to take a quick look. Hello. Um, I was going to say hello, right, Joel? Um... Oh, such a series of exciting breakthroughs. I'm optimistic that we'll eventually find a way to reach Vobonia. But these things... They, they, they take time. Uh, meanwhile, why don't you try to climb up the ladder on Coronet, for example? With all of your experience, even the Titan tier should be within reach. Eh... Uh, fighting Titans is one thing. Fighting other real-life people is another. Especially when you can't use items. You got the Wobonians. I hope they don't feel blue. Especially after their devastating defeats. Dear oh dear. Rigel officially appointed me as fellow as lead expert on dark magic. Finally, more field work. I'm already planning my next expedition to Ixquin. Well, good luck with that. I mean, it's still a dangerous place for sure. Oh, don't give me that look. These pots are keeping them safe. Yeah, because they can't breathe our air, can they? Soon, the ruins of Ixquin will be the perfect place for their society to integrate with ours. You're gonna let them live in the ruins of Ixquin? I mean, it's not the Water Titan's domain, so... Maybe it could work. There are tons of dark magic Kormon around there already. 
Maybe. I've been passing through their extracted memories. Can you imagine a planet with just one element? And still, they were able to create an found society. I believe that all they really wanted was to find a new future for their species. Indeed. But, with everything in life, it's about the way that you try to achieve something like that. Maybe if their hubris wasn't that great, maybe if Ron's hubris wasn't that great, it could have come to us on more peaceful terms, just like how our Titan suggested it. Maybe we could have helped them. Maybe. Who knows. And other than some splotches of dark magic here and there, it looks like everything is peaceful here. Can we go down here? What? Oh, I can't go up there! Aw, oh, come on! I want to see what's down- well, we, We've seen what's down there, but... They made a ladder, come on! Uh, maybe one day. Anyway, uh, that means that almost everything is checked. There's one more thing that I want to see. Are the people of LV back? Like, the danger has disappeared right now. They fixed stuff! Oh, thank you, Luxolis. Oh, they no longer have the vending machine outside. They cleaned everything up nicely. Everyone is back. Harold the Strong has his work cut out for him. Some of the towns have got too weak to make the trek back to town, so I'll be carrying them on my own back. Well, good luck, Harold. I'm sure you will manage. Uh, Kit, hi, Thorbjorn. I found a ton of carrots at our refuge. Now I can build an entire army of snowmen to protect LV. And you've already fixed your previous snowman. Good job. <laughs> Jarl, I've been working with them scientist nerds of yours to get this town all spruced up again. Good bunch of fellas. Could have done it without them. Yeah, well, Lex Solace is quite something. Once we get settled, we'll be making plans for a new festival. In your honor. What do you think of the name Fulton Elder Fest? Uh, not too sure about that one, but... Anyway, you must come. There'll be a day filled with ice skating, decorations, and of course, delicious food. Sounds glorious, Greta. Sounds glorious. Ah, oh, nice to see them all back. Gunnar! Gunnar Gunnarsson thanks you for your help. Fulton, Fulton, Elderson, what? I say thank you too for your cheerfulness. And of course, Cup Zero. Ah, <laughs> uh, well... I think this is a perfect time to end things. Oh, this was quite the adventure. I am really curious to see what the developers have in mind in regards to changes for the future, in regards to the ending narrative, because... Eh, I, I can agree that maybe it's a little bit short, maybe it can use a little bit of work here and there, but I am curious to see what they have planned for the future, which for now means it's time for the credits, and it's time to go over my thoughts. And in case you don't care about the credits and my thoughts all that much, thank you for watching. Have a very nice day, and as always, remember... Have fun! So, first things first, that is my first ever successful Nuzlocke! Sure, I had my own rules set to make things easier, and I imagine I would have been in a whole lot of trouble if I didn't allow myself to capture those potents and use them. But I've had so much fun with this adventure. At the end, the total playtime lies somewhere around the 77 hours for this Let's Play alone, with the safe training strategy obviously taking up a lot of time. But I've had an absolute blast. And... Thank you all for joining me on this adventure. It's one thing to do a Nuzlocke all by yourself, but it's been great to put together something nice for all of you with the montages and everything. Although one thing is for sure, with the amount of editing and the whole changing overlay, this let's play for sure is the one that has taken me the most time outside of recording to get everything looking good. And I do feel like it paid off. But this is the moment where I want to talk about my thoughts on Coromon and not my thoughts about me succeeding in Muslock, so let me start with the following. This is what I hoped would have been the future of the original Pokemon games. Stick to the pixel art style, get creative and make something beautiful out of it with a fun and interesting story. 
I loved the way that this game looked, together with the brilliant monster design and the life that was visible in them. So if there is one wish I could make, should there be more Coromon games in the future, please stick to this art style and don't go 3D like recent Pokemon games, even if the budget would allow it. You've got something special here and I hope to see you build further upon it. All the areas looked diverse and interesting. You had proper battle backgrounds for each main zone and officially it all felt like a complete package. So I'd say keep up the good work. If a Cormon 2 is ever made, I'd love to see more of this. Now, Normally when I voice my opinion on a game I often follow a certain set of talking points so from visuals we best move over to the overall story and I really liked it. Of course I am used to the Pokemon games where you're always this new kid who wants to become a Pokemon master, so I was happy to see that here the story of a battle research was taken instead. No specific age is given, so your character can be young or old, whatever you like. Brilliant starting point. Uh, the main story though could maybe use a tiny bit more polish here and there. For example, at some point it's mentioned that there were natural disasters of some kind, which would end up most likely being the result of the equilibrium being disrupted, but other than some minor earthquakes in Flamma and the dark magic rocks appearing in LV, were there any real natural disasters we learned of? What was the exact cause of the Mesha realm overflowing with souls which caused all the trouble in Parbury? Was that the Rabonians doing or something else? There's like tiny tidbits that could have been improved to flow a little bit better. I I'm happy with the story, but it's a small thing. Same case with the ending. And we know that at the time of recording this, uh, the developers intend to change the Titan dialogue and ending narrative, though I'm not sure how big the changes would be, but it feels a bit incomplete right now in some regards. The Rubonians just stood there and let everything happen while we be drawn to a pulp, and then we miss out on the part where they are now suddenly in those pots and with Luxolus. How did they get there? Were they captured? Did they come crawling back to Luxolus to ask for help now that that plan with Ron had failed? What about Ron himself? Some parts currently just feel unfinished or a tiny bit rushed. Like. The how to submerge tunnels before we reached Ixquan were such a tiny area, or how Ixquan itself had not too much going for it other than the strong enemy Corbon and the wild dark magic ones. And although it's commendable that they want to change some things in a future update, it would have been nice if changes weren't required in the first place. Still though, I liked the story and am curious to see what changes the developers have got planned and what their ideas are for possible second games. They have made a brilliant world of which we've only seen a small region, and thus it is brimming with storytelling potential. Now, let's move over to level design and I'll instantly combine this category with gameplay while I'm at it. The battle system is awesome and I love the concept of the SP system. It's fresh compared to the PP system of Pokemon and it brings its own strategy elements along with it. I did wish for there to be a few extra Coromon families though. Sure, I get that Tracksoft is a small indie team and they certainly don't have a Game Freak budget and I am happy with what was here, especially considering all the animations on all the different Coromon, but having 107 Coromon without counting the Dark Magic variants. Eh, uh, sometimes it feels like every type could have used at least one more family of Cormon to add that bit of extra diversity. I'm sorry that I'm making the comparisons and I definitely don't want Cormon, uh, I don't want Cormon to be just like Pokemon, but I've got it stuck in my head that the first generation of Pokemon had 151 different monsters and also a total of 14 or 15 different types compared to the fewer amount we've got in Coromon, together with the addition of dual types. Bulbasaur for example was grass and poison even back in the generation 1 games. Coromon 
is doing its own thing with only having a single type per Coromon and the interesting idea of skill only typings and that is perfectly fine and works quite well but for some reason I've got this idea and feeling that maybe there should have been one additional base type and perhaps the consideration of dual types. Um, I mentioned this back near Light's Dojo as well and Flamma on how I felt like there was something missing in regards to a nature or a grass type of element regarding the Coromon. Quagu and Swampa and thus our Kelpie felt like they were the only Coromon design wise that had this nature and plant feeling to them. And I guess just like how Pokemon introduced the Dark and Steel type to the game in their second generation, maybe Coromon can do something similar for their own second game, but with more of a focus on the nature element. Have some plant creatures or maybe even adapt the poison type to become an actual type. Maybe have dark magic be the cause for the appearance of a nature type as a way of nature itself fighting back against this foreign element, with brand new Coromon being created through it. I, I just feel like having only 7 base types could end up becoming a bit restrictive if they stick to it in the future iterations of the game, but the elements that they did choose, they work out really nicely. Then you also have got the whole shiny system or potential system. I still remember the first time I found a shiny in the Pokemon games. It was a green Meryl who later turned out into a yellow Azumarill. I never understood why there was this sudden color change between the evolutions, but finding this rare, differently colored monster was awesome. And back then I didn't even know anything about natures, IVs, EVs. I'm older now and I still don't fully get it. But then Coromon comes knocking and knocks it right out of the, par of the park. Combining the better stats with the shiny system is just brilliant and also makes things so much easier to understand. The fact that they allow you to distribute your own potential points just feels so good. And most important of all, with additions like the ability to change your trait and even reset your potential points, no captured Coromon ever feels like a lost cause. Oh, you found a perfect Coromon that has a horrible trait that is not useful at all? No problem, you can change it! All of this means that there is no need for trading or breeding like in the Pokemon games and instead you can focus your time on tracking down those perfects yourself, as with things like the potent sense that is actually viable to do and good to do. And even if you can't find that perfect 21 potential, half a Coromon of 20 is also enough if you use the Potentiflator. Gone are the days of mindlessly grinding and breeding for hours and hours, hundreds of hours, just to get that one perfect Pokemon in your squad. The way that Cormon does it, mmm, chef's kiss. Now all I can hope for is that the developers won't go the route of Game Freak in the future where they remove beloved features from next installments of the game with the excuse of, oh but that was a thing in only that region, not in this one. Maybe we'll bring it back once we make another remake, okay? Mega Evolution? No, no, now we have Pokemon that go big and overpowered for a few turns. Mega Evolution doesn't exist anymore, but maybe it will in the future. Uh, of course, Coromon is still in its infancy and I love to see this title grow to the point where they indeed can make multiple games with interesting stories and new features. But I do hope that these current features will become a staple of any next installment. If it can't be explained with science, then there is always magic. Now in regards to the other gameplay, like on the overworld, I really like what they did with things like the ice line puzzles, the log puzzles, or the, the strange jumping mechanic in the Monastery of Illusion. And I can 100% feel the references and inspiration to the Golden Sun games there. But I really hope that for the future Coromon games, they will lean even more into this. The log puzzles were cool, but could have easily been more frequent and complex. Maybe some pillars in the ruins of Ixquin could have been pushed. 
The illusion jumping mechanic could even be used as a way of normal jumping traversal in the game, similar to how the Golden Sun games handled the jumping from pillar to pillar in normal environments, which opened up so many cool exploration sections. The push module could maybe be enhanced to serve similarly to the move synergy from those games, which in turn would allow for a ton of extra possibilities in regards to level design. I want Coromon to be its own thing, 100%, and I am very sorry if these suggestions would make things be too similar to Pokemon and Golden Sun, but so often during this playthrough have the thoughts in the back of my head been saying, wouldn't it have been cool to have some of those interesting puzzles from Golden Sun be in this game? Stuff like pushing a log into the river to serve as a jumping platform to get across. Using a burn module to burn down an ice pillar so that you could push a pillar past that section only to later refreeze the puddle with maybe a frost blast. And then move some standing pillars around with the push modules so that you can jump on top of it and get across to the next area. What I'm trying to say is there are so many possibilities for the future of Cormon. And I am really hoping that Cormon's future will shine bright. And of course, there is one thing I haven't touched upon just yet, but which I really, really enjoyed. And that will be the boss battles. And yes, I am including the fight against the fuse box back in the power tower, because that was just brilliant. It's a bit of a shame there weren't more special fights like that fuse box. Like, maybe something like a massive mushroom in the soggy swamps that had to be taken down with cut moves being more effective. While the spores would slowly poison your team and Wild Coromon would be put under the mushroom spell to occasionally serve as defenders. Or a culmination of restless spirits that had to be calmed while we were transformed into a perky inside of the realm known as the in-between. And thus we would have our own special moves for that specific battle. Not meant as hard challenges, but just as fun and interesting battles that would make use of this mini-boss concept that was started with that bloody fuse box. And then of course, you had really interesting battles like the mirror challenge and the final test with Light Sensei. So again, thumbs up. That kind of stuff is awesome. But that takes me to the Titan battles. And yeah, this is how I'd like to see boss fights in the monster capture game. The multiple faces, the powering up, the curveballs being thrown. It helped that I overprepared without actually overleveling my team for most of them, all because I was trying to keep everyone alive. And as a result, I did plow through some of them because of the teams I had constructed. No offense, Hosei, but you just weren't prepared for that rainy day. But those fights were awesome. Should a second Cormon game be made? Please have more of those kinds of boss battles. Although, don't obviously replace every difficult fight with a boss, because there is always a charm in fighting a strong trainer with multiple Coromon. Like that guard captain in the Rudik, or the main leader fellow from the Monastery of Illusion. The boss battles with Titans just require a different kind of strategy, and it is great to have a mixture of both. So yeah. I think that is all that I've got to say regarding Coromon. I am looking forward to seeing the changes that are planned. I'm intrigued by the prospect of a single player post game in the future. And above all, I'm wishing for an amazing future for Coromon. This game with its art style, gameplay, music and story has really reminded me of my childhood days with things like the Pokemon and Golden Sun games. And Although it is a comparison, it's also the best compliment that I can give. I thank everyone for joining me on this adventure, and I hope that you too have enjoyed it equally as much as I did. Have a very nice day, and as always, remember, have fun.